Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Since ancient times, military leaders have looked for ways to get warcraft from ships onto beaches. After many different methods were thought of and tested, it was hovercraft technology that proved to be the most effective. Today, heavy machinery of war is brought right onto the beach for deployment using hovercraft like the landing craft air cushion. Persia's invasion of Greece in 490 BC, which included the Battle of Marathon, was the first recorded amphibious assault. Despite their initial success landing on the shore, the Persians were ultimately defeated by the formidable Greek defense, demonstrating the intricacy of amphibious operations. Modern amphibious assaults are carefully planned operations, which rely on principles such as coordination, landing on a wide front, and having combat and air support. Few forces are better at this type of operation than the United States Marine Corps. From a single amphibious assault ship, they can land a full Marine Expeditionary Unit of up to 2,000 Marines and their equipment. A large part of the success of amphibious assault operations lies in combat service support. In the case of the Marines, the landing craft air cushion provides the means for the assault force to get all the backup they need, from vehicles to additional Marines, shortly after establishing the beachhead. LCACs can carry up to 75 tons of cargo from the amphibious assault ship to the beach. Thanks to its large, open cargo bay, it can be loaded with vehicles as large as the A1M1 Abrams main battle tank. When assaulting any objective, most generals would never turn down having the capacity to do it with tanks at the front. At almost 60 tons, the M1A1 Abrams is a beast. But the Marines had more than one way of getting them to the beach. Option one was with the LCAC, where the tank drives right off the cargo ramp onto dry land. Another way is using a landing craft utility, which gets the tank close enough to the beach so that the driver only traverses a few feet of water before they hit dry land. Once tanks are on land, they form part of the expeditionary force. If an advance is required, the tanks lead the way, just behind reconnaissance units. Tanks do not operate as individual vehicles. They work in sections, platoons, companies, and even larger units. Working together requires training because of the complicated nature of command and control using radios. It's also important to note that these tanks are brought to shore by the U.S. Navy which operates all the LCACs and LCUs. Therefore, coordination with U.S. Navy elements is also critical. Main battle tanks are not only powerful combat vehicles, but because of their combination of armor, armament, and mobility, they also offer a strong psychological advantage to whoever uses them. As its main armament, the M1A1 Abrams has a 120 mm smoothbore gun, which can hit targets almost two miles away.
The second armament consists of a 7.62 millimeter coaxially mounted machine gun. Although tanks can operate as large units, the U.S. Marine Corps utilized them in platoons of four tanks. They can then form part of a company with platoons of infantry and assault amphibious vehicles, insulating into a Marine Expeditionary Unit. Tank logistics places a lot of strain on tank units. Innovative means of supplying tanks with fuel and ammunition help tank platoons maintain the initiative. One such supply method is by utilizing CH-53E Super Stallion helicopters from Marine Heavy Helicopter Squadrons to refuel tanks. A tactical bulk fuel delivery system allows a CH-53E helicopter to supply fuel to an M1A1 Abrams tank. The helicopter transports fuel bladders, or tanks, and lands near the Abrams, where ground technicians connect hoses to deliver fuel straight to the tanks. Even though the U.S. Army does not conduct amphibious operations, it can land its tanks on a beach, usually to link up with other units engaged in combat, such as Marines or Airborne Forces. U.S. Army Mariners operate logistic support vessels, such as the USAV Five Forks. These vessels can take Abrams' main battle tanks aboard and land them on a beach if required. This is a combined joint logistics over the shore operation. Exercises like these provide the U.S. Army with greater flexibility. Another means of performing CJ LOTS missions is by utilizing the improved Navy Lighterage system to get cargo onto and off a shoreline. The INLS is a modular floating platform system designed to carry goods, vehicles, and equipment between ships and the shore when port facilities are unavailable. It consists of powered and non-powered parts that can be combined to build causeways or ferries. INLS provides the Navy's ability to execute amphibious and logistics over the shore operations, enabling faster deployment and sustainment. Deploying the INLS is a process that starts with offloading modules of the system. This is done from ships like a 2nd Lieutenant John P. Bobo class cargo ship. Once the initial INLS module is in the water, further modules are deployed and joined with locking pins to construct larger structures. Tugboats or powered modules move and position the parts. The constructed lighterage system generates floating causeways or ferries, making it easier to carry cargo and vehicles from ships to land, bypassing port facilities and allowing for more efficient logistics operations. A crane on the USNS First Lieutenant Baldomero Lopez is used to lift vehicles like a Humvee out of the ship and onto the INLS in multiple stages. First, the support elements connect the lifting slings to the vehicle's assigned lifting points. The crane carefully lifts and then lowers the Humvee off of the ship's deck. 
keeping it balanced and secure. Using precise controls, the operator swings the crane's boom to place the vehicle over the desired INLS module. Finally, the vehicle is lowered onto the INLS, where ground crews secure it for transportation. U.S. Army vessels also prove that they have the ability to load other resources, such as the M142 High Mobility Artillery Rocket System. In this example, we see U.S. Marines and a U.S. Army support group load and transport HIMARS launchers during an Army landing craft utility exercise. Not only can the HIMARS be transported by the U.S. Army, but it has the ability to transport a variety of other vehicles and weapon systems. Getting the HIMARS from inside the vessel onto the deck of the USS New Orleans relies on good driving capabilities, with guidance from support personnel. USS New Orleans is an amphibious transport dock also called a landing platform dock. These vessels are used by the U.S. Marine Corps to stage amphibious landings. Although this type of vessel is not equipped to engage land targets at extended ranges, the HIMARS can. Once the HIMARS is secured to the deck of the LPD, it is prepared for a live fire exercise called a sea-based expeditionary fires event. From the deck, the targeting information is determined and all of the necessary adjustments are read into the fire control system of the M142. Once the HIMARS is ready to execute its fire mission, the rocket or missile is launched and strikes its target from 5.6 miles up to 310 miles away. Except for systems like the HIMARS, LPDs often host other live firing exercises, such as 50 caliber heavy machine guns, classified as crew served weapons. These heavy machine guns can be applied from various platforms, including Humvees with turrets. Firing these weapons at sea is important in terms of providing training and testing the weapons for operability. Fifty caliber Browning machine guns are among the oldest in use worldwide but also one of the most versatile and reliable. Fifty caliber machine guns are also known as the Madus. In this instance, they are mounted on JLTVs. JLTVs are meant to be replacing the Humvee in time. Crews also fire the M240B light machine gun from the JLTV turrets. Where the 50 caliber machine gun is a 12.7 millimeter weapon, the M24B is a 7.62 millimeter or 30 caliber weapon. The 50 cal can engage targets at up to 2,000 yards. And the M240B has a shorter range with less stopping power, but it is a lighter weapon with lighter ammunition. Okay. So, yeah, just... Half load. Projecting military power from ships onto a shoreline is critical for creating beachheads and then expanding those with additional support. Where the U.S. Marine Corps are amphibious specialists, the U.S. Army can support them by getting its own forces onto the shore.
By utilizing resources from LCACs to LCUs and logistic support vessels, the limits of the U.S. military far exceed those of most countries. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.